Hello, everyone, and welcome to Challenge 3, Trial of the Trumpet. It is, of course, called Trial of the Trumpet because you get the Trumpet General in this game. And this game is the only one that has the Trumpet General until the final trial. This will be a recurring theme throughout most of the games, is that the piece or pieces that the game is based on, or at least the overall challenge that it gives as a trial will be based off of a certain piece. You saw this in the last game with Trial of the Trades with the Lioness, and the first game, Trial of the Crane, which had the Crane King. And uh, this will be recurring throughout all the games until the final game, which of course mixes pretty much all of those challenges together. But for this game, we of course have the Trumpet General as a new piece, but there's a few other new pieces that we'll be going over as well. Before we hop into learning pieces though, I want to quick give a recap of the changes for this board and overall setup than from the last game, which was Trial of the Trades. Starting off are two promotion lines right here. Uh, Obviously, the, the board has gotten a little bit bigger, as it always will be getting bigger, but this board is a 15 by 15, which means you have 15 columns in your, in your starting lineup, and you have five rows within that for your room before the promotion zone. There's five rows in the middle of the board where your forward units start, and five rows for the enemy's back line, which is where your promotion zone lies. You also have three empty spaces on each side of the board. You had two last time, and like I have said in the past, you'll be getting four for the fourth trial, and so on. Other than that, your forward units, two go-betweens, this is the final game that only has two forward units. If you remember from Trial of the Crane, there was two pawns forward, and in Trial of the Trades, there was two go-betweens, and this one also has two go-betweens. But... The next game will be getting more and more, so get used to getting more forward units as soon as you can, I guess. Other than that, I just want to go over a little bit of symmetry. As you can see, the Queen, Lion, Bottlenose Dolphin, and King are right down the middle, and uh, that's the same on the enemy's side. But the board is flipped, not mirrored, and the non-symmetry parts is the Trumpet General and Drunken Elephant. Trumpet General, Drunken Elephant, and then your Phoenix and Kieran. Other than that, the board is symmetrical. So now let's hop into a recap of pieces from the last games that are in this game. So a recap of pieces that are in this game that we've already seen from the previous two trials. Thank you. 
First up, we have the stone general. Very simple, diagonal steps forward, that's it. Promotes to a gold general. Also, everybody knows what the gold general looks like. Don't have to stay on this for too long. The iron general, much like the stone general, Diagonal Steps Forward also has a regular step forward, and it also promotes to a gold general. And the final step mover that's been added to this game is the Evil Wolf. It has sideways steps. And then the stem steps as the Iron General, which is two diagonal forward and forward regular, and it also promotes to a gold general. Now, all three of these pieces, the Stone, Iron, and Evil Wolf, all have comparably very poor promotion, thinking about it. It's not exciting to promote these pieces by any means, but... The Evil Wolf is mainly going to be used as a piece that stays near your king and protects your backline. So getting it to the end and promoting it is not recommended, especially since it's not even worth it in the end. You only gain one step move backwards. But the Iron General and Stone General's promotions will end up happening quite often, actually, in this game. And that is because of its special mechanic. But I'm not going to be talking about that until we get to the Trumpet General itself. If you do actually promote the Iron or Stone Generals, just think about the fact that a lot of pieces, such as the Gold General and Silver General, when they get to the enemy's promotion line in the first place, sometimes isn't recommended to be promoted. And that's because they actually hold more space or hold better space unpromoted than when they're actually promoted. And that kind of concept holds true with these pieces especially, given the fact that they promote to a Gold General. A lot of times you'll be using these pieces to just hold space in the enemy lines to allow more pieces to promote or to push for a win. Next up, we'll be talking about the knight. Now you might ask, this knight looks really poor in comparison to the knight of regular chess. And it, it is actually kind of crappy in comparison to regular chess's knight. But remember that its promotion is the mighty knight. And basically it just turns into the knight from regular chess. Or western chess. Now, this piece is, is good. And I would definitely, by all means, always promote it. I mean, there's no point in not promoting it. You keep the same movement and just add more. But... Trying to promote this piece might be misleading. It might be more effective to just keep it as a defensive piece or to push with it and trade it off for something more important. When I said we were done with step movers, I lied. Next up, we've got the angry boar. I could just take out the fact that I said, uh, no, keep it in, I'm keeping it in. Uh, next up, we have the Angry Boar. It is a step mover with orthogonal step moves. And the reason why it's after all these other pieces is, one, it is technically a little bit stronger than some of them. It's slow. But if you promote it, it becomes the Mountain Eagle. And this is a really strong promotion. This is another side quest piece where if you can get this to the promotion zone, it's a huge promotion. It is, I mean, it's stronger than the Gold General promoting to a Rook. It is the same movements as a Rook, as well as a jump move and forward diagonals, and limited ranges up to two spaces on the diagonal behind it. It's a it's a decently strong piece, and it's, it's a precursor to the Soaring Eagle in the sense that it has very similar movements to that piece. We just did the Angry Boar, which had step moves in the orthogonal, and now we're moving on to the Cat Sword, which has its step moves on the diagonal. And uh, 
the cat sword and the angry boar are pieces that are very similar and they're similar for reasons uh, but also notably the cat sword is less effective at holding space but faster because of its diagonal movement again i will say this over and over again as i always have diagonal moves are faster but hold less space and orthogonal moves hold more space but are slower its promotion the mountain falcon is very similar to the mountain eagle in the fact that it's just on the diagonals instead of the orthogonals notably you also get this backward range which is nice but not a huge game breaking mechanic or anything like that Next up, we've got the Bottlenose Dolphin. It's kind of a weird piece, and it has sports a new movement art, which is the... It's actually not really new, it's more just like a combination of two previous movement pieces, but that is the jump forward one space, and the jump forward and to the left or right space, which is why it has the jump forward right here, and then it has a jump forward to here and here, just like the knight. It also has jump forward diagonally, which is why this full row right here is filled in, and then simple step moves to the sides and behind to the sides. Its promotion is the sperm whale, and as you'll note, it does lose a bit of its overarching uh, forward attacking potential, but replaces that forward attacking potential right next to it, and it gains the ability to eagerly eat and double step, or with a rail double move, in both diagonal forward directions, and it gains this one step. This is a great example of a piece that can easily get to the promotion zone quickly with its fast approaching jumping potential, but then once it gets there, it has great mobility in the enemy backline and has the potential to attack multiple pieces at a time, which is why it's a really great promoted piece. Next up, we've got the Violent Ox. This is a piece that has limited ranging two spaces in all the orthogonal directions, and it's basically the Angry Boar times two. Again, limited range does not mean you can capture two pieces with the move. It just means that you get to move up two two spaces in that range. So if there was a piece here, you couldn't capture it and then move here. You'd have to stop and capture the piece. Uh, it's got overarchingly the same problem as the angry boar which is that it's kind of slow but it is overall a strong piece nonetheless if you do promote it it turns into the flying oxen next up we've got the flying dragon just like with the Angry Boar and the Cat Sword, the Flying Dragon is the Violent Ox's counterpart, in that it has two-step ranging, limited ranging, on the diagonals instead of the orthogonals. It's a little bit faster than the Violent Ox, but doesn't hold as much space. Its promotion, on the other hand, is completely different from the Violent Ox's, and that is the Rain Dragon. This is another piece that I would say has a really good promotion. It's Step moves forward allow it to still move in towards the enemy base after promotion. Because it was faster in its previous form, it can easily infiltrate farther back into the back lines without having to worry as much about being attacked. And once it does finally promote, it's got great mobility for escape potential. But if you can anchor it in the enemy's back line, it can put huge pressure from behind the enemy. And this can be a really great tool for holding space and allowing more pieces to get in and promote. Canyon sports the hop range, and this might be confusing because there's going to be more hop range variants coming up in the next versions. First, we'll start with the basic and most common one, 
the regular hop range. It's shown by this art right here, and it basically means that you range in this direction, but in order to capture, it must hop over one piece, whether friendly or foe, and then capture the next piece that it comes into contact with. I'll be showing this off right now in real life to give better examples. The cannon moves move just like they would as a ranging piece when they are not capturing, at least this variant of the cannon moves do. So for example, on White's turn here, they could move this one space this direction, or if it was over here, could range all the way to here. But because there is an intervening piece between it and the enemy king, that would put the king in check. Because on the next move, in order to capture with this piece, you need to hop over a piece and then capture a piece afterwards. So if the black team does not do anything about this piece, having this piece in the way, they can indeed capture the enemy king here. So for example, the enemy king could move here to avoid this attack. Now you'll see this tile cannon right here is in line with the king, but because there is no piece in the way, there's no piece for it to hop over, its attack would not hit the king. Although on white's next turn, they can do this. Now, even though it's a friendly piece, there is a piece in the way. So this tile cannon now has an opportunity to jump over and capture the enemy king. So now it's back to Black's turn. Black will have to move again. Now that you've seen that, I will show off its promotion, the Flying Cannon. Flying Cannon has the same hop range on the diagonals as the tile cannon. It also sports limited ranging two-steppers on the orthogonal directions. Next up we have the Copper Cannon, same hop range mechanic as the last one, except this one is on the orthogonals instead of diagonals, and it, they, it works exactly the same. Its promotion is the Running Cannon. As you can see, it's very similar to the last one in that it gains a two-step limited range on all the diagonals because it has its regular hop range on the orthogonals. Next up we have the Lion, and we've seen the Lioness, and you've seen the Kyrian's promotion to the Lion, so I really don't need to explain this all that well. The Lion is the same thing, eagerly eat, move, or double step in any directions. It holds great space, it's a really great uh, piece for defending yourself, and if you get it into the enemy backline, it's a really great piece for holding space. But there is one thing that you'll note about this piece that wasn't in the rest, which is that this piece does actually promote... It promotes to the Lion Hawk, and this is a pretty strong piece. It sports a new movement art, which is the, these right here. It's actually, again, just like the last one that I explained, it's kind of just two movement arts strapped on top of each other, which is the Igui or double move plus the range. So basically, it can range on the diagonals or move like a lion. And it's time for the final new piece for this game, the Trumpet General themselves. As you can see, the actual movement of this piece is very simple. It's got step ranges to the sides and diagonally behind itself, as well as a double step limit range behind it, and a quad step limit range in front of it, and a whatever it is for five. It, it can move up to five spaces on this limit range to the diagonals in front of it. Now. On its own, this piece isn't very interesting, but what makes it interesting is this aspect that it has. This aspect is called the trumpet aspect, and it basically allows the piece to, instead of moving normally, make a swap move with any other general. And I'll throw these generals on the board right now. For now, you don't have all those pieces available, and you can only swap with the generals that are currently in this game, which is, of course, the gold, silver, copper, Iron and Stone. 
and that's why there's more generals added in this game to allow this to be more useful. Now, this swap maneuver allows you to, like I said, with any general on your board, anywhere on the board, you can trade locations with the trumpet general and that general of your choice. And, of course, I would also like to show off its promotion, the Mighty Horakai. Now, the Mighty Horakai is not centered on this because it actually has a limited range up to six bases, which means that it wouldn't have fit if I put it right here. But one, two, three, four, five, six. Limited range up to six spaces, both of the diagonals, and it has a limit range of up to four spaces on this orthogonal direction forward. Still has the same step moves diagonally behind and to the sides, but it gains another limited range of up to four spaces behind it now. Just gives it a little bit more maneuverability, but it's aspect has been changed yet again. This aspect is called the Mighty Trumpet, and this allows you to, instead of using its trade rules with just the Trumpet General and another General, it can now trade any two Generals, including itself, with each other. So for example, you could trade your Silver General and Gold General spaces. I'm going to go over a bit of opening strategy for the Trial 3 Trial of the Trumpet now. Some examples of effective gameplay at the beginning would definitely be to bring your trumpet general out as soon as possible and use it to quicken your step movers behind bringing them into the mid game. Uh, for example, an easy early opening could be something along these lines. And now that your trumpet general is out, your next move could be something along these lines. That's a trumpet move to trade the generals. And then over the next few moves, you can do something along these lines. And then your next trade. As you can see, with effective positioning, you can quickly get out three of your generals with just a few extra setup moves. Uh, now, moving it over to this side, and getting all of these generals is effective, but also saving some of your generals for later on in the game, you might be able to actually pierce into the enemy battle lines. Uh, for example, if this was moved for some stupid reason to here, piercing into this area and promoting to the mighty Horakai would allow you to, on the next move, swap these two, and it immediately promotes to a gold general. And then on the next move, you could use the Mighty Horakai's move to swap these two. And you'll note how I quickly promoted some of my weaker generals into their strong forms of the gold general, which is why these weak stone and iron generals promote to a simple gold general. It's because of this strategy right here. The ability to quickly swap using the Mighty Horakai's uh, double trumpet move to swap them more effectively. This can allow you to promote four of your generals directly over four turns into gold general or uh, the gold general versions, and then afterwards promote, say, a gold general into a rook or something along these lines. Uh, it is a very useful strategy and definitely recommended when it comes to opening to use trumpet general and get that out as quickly as possible. Some other effective openings would be, again, I would always recommend getting your Trumpet General out as soon as possible, but you can build up these flanks pretty effectively. The biggest issue with building up the flanks in this game uh, compared to the last game, Trial of Trades, is that your vertical mover is so far away from the main flank. And so you're realistically only maybe gonna be able to get a few extra pieces involved. Uh, you can start by doing something like this. And bringing your copper general into the play. Remember that the copper general will have to be played after these two are traded off to jump over your reverse chariot. And as such, it's it'll, it'll always be played before the piece in front of it, or else it'll be useless as a trading piece. You can bring your dragon knight and queen into play if you uh, work for it, but that is somewhat difficult to do. For example, you could bring up on the right half of the board here, uh, bringing in some of your pieces, like the Phoenix, moving your Dragon Horse 
so that you can get your bottlenose dolphin out after a few moves. This can be effective, although I would always recommend bringing step movers along with these pieces to try to help bolster your attack more effectively. It is always more effective to have a, a variety of step movers involved in your attack than just simply throwing pieces at the enemy. This is the same thing. The only difference is that your trumpet general can help bring those pieces into the play so much faster than perhaps you would uh, you would if you were using just the regular pieces. Say thank you all for watching, and I hope you'll stay tuned for the next video, Trial by Fire. This is the halfway point in the series after this one, and it's a doozy, let me just say. But anyway, thank you all for watching. Hope you have a nice day, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.